Hi travellers, Chris here and welcome to Toowoomba in the heart of the Darling Downs and I've got views of the Tabletop Mountain behind me and uh, we're going to explore Toowoomba over the next couple of days and find you some things to do but as you can see the weather's not looking the absolute best and uh, there's a lot of fog coming in. Um, when we came here yesterday you couldn't actually see out to Tabletop so uh, I'm going to try my very best to find a lot of the things to do for you and uh, see what you uh, think about Toowoomba. Toowoomba, or otherwise known as the Garden City, is located two hours west of Brisbane and the second most popular inland city in Australia. This is the Darling Downs region and features a country lifestyle with a growing city atmosphere. They have over 100,000 people living there and get about 800,000 tourists visit each year. It also stands between 680 and 700 metres above sea level which means the weather can be on the cooler side. But enough about that and let's explore some of the best things to do in Toowoomba. Starting off today, we have a picnic point, which is located on the eastern side of Toowoomba and where you can enjoy the best views over the Darling Downs region. You have many different hikes and even a waterfall to see. along with a cafe, lookout points, playgrounds and gardens. You can pack a picnic for the day, host your next event, hike for some local wildlife or just check out the views of Tabletop Mountain and the vast Lockyer Valley. You will find many different areas and laneways around Toowoomba City with spray painted street art. I must admit that I did find some of them a little disappointing, but only due to the graffiti over the top of them. The ones we did manage to find in TAC were very artistic, colourful, and well worth it if you're into regional art creations. Try looking around Duggan Street, Mark Lane, Bank Lane, and Searles Walk, or near the car park of the Empire Theatre. One of the biggest events of the year and what Toowoomba is most known for is the Carnival of Flowers. For the entire month of September, the city and botanic gardens are displayed in bright colours and competitions are held for private gardens. The main scenic areas would be Queen's Park, Picnic Point and Laurel Bank Park. However, if you don't mind driving out of town, then the Spring Bluff Railway Station can also be a great spot. There is one weekend during September which holds the actual carnival, therefore full of rides, music, food vans, competition announcements and the lunchtime city parade. Trying to visit during this particular weekend is extremely busy and should be organised well in advance. This includes the bus tours, viewing the gardens and accommodation needs. The Japanese gardens are located in the southwest corner of Toowoomba near the university. You could spend an hour walking around the different displays, bridges, looking at the ducks, or learning about the different plants. Discover the tranquility through the four and a half hectares in one of the largest Japanese gardens in Australia. The Empire Theatre was built in 1911, one of the largest performing arts complexes in regional Australia. It's known for its art deco and serves as an entertainment focal point providing art experiences, programs and educational resources to the Darling Downs region. The Cobb & Co Museum is home to the National Carriage Collection and part of Brisbane's Queensland Museum. There is a huge array of vehicles, horse-drawn carriages, outback memorabilia, and extensive displays. Learn about the heritage trades, blacksmithing, silversmithing, lead lighting, and leatherwork. There are lectures, children's activities, and curriculum-based educational programs for school students. It's open every day of the week from 9.30 till four, 
and great rainy day weather activity walking through the enclosed facility. Take a short 20 minute drive north of Toowoomba City and visit the Black Forest Hill Cuckoo Clock Centre in Kabala. Explore the German craftsmanship and listen for the intricate sounds. You might not be into clocks that much, but it is an amazing place to see all the different sizes and the detail that goes into making the cuckoo clock. If anything, enjoy the drive out of the city and have some morning tea and a coffee in the cafe. The Highfields Pioneer Village is located obviously in Highfields on the north side of town. It costs $15 per adult to enter and is open from 10 till 4 every day. Much like the Cobb & Co Museum, you can expect some old school memorabilia like the Heritage Chapel, windmills, vehicles, penny farthings, a fire brigade museum and wooden pioneer toys. Not only that, but the entrance is guarded by a giant cow made out of concrete. I suppose this could be added to some of the big things of Australia. They run special events here, school groups, weddings, and even a miniature steam train to take the kids for a ride. There are two different ways you can experience Tabletop Mountain. First is the easiest way from the views of Picnic Point and admiring from a distance. The second would be to drive down the range to the walking trail and challenge yourself to the two kilometre uphill hike. I haven't actually done this hike myself, but I have heard that it can be steep, very uneven ground, and the path is not clearly marked in certain sections. Tabletop is a volcanic origin and known for its flat peak. The Spring Bluff Railway Station has 150 years of history, running a railway line between Ipswich and Toowoomba. It's heritage listed and contains some beautifully landscaped gardens. Around the Carnival of Flowers time, obviously these gardens are a lot more colourful. The station was decommissioned around 1992 and now preserved for history and local significance. It's free to enter and can be viewed at any time. There is a cafe supplying small snacks and drinks to the visitors, but it wasn't actually open on our visit. The Bunya Mountains is a beautiful area to explore and known for its vast array of bunya trees and the large bunya nut. It's an isolated section of the Great Dividing Range and is located about one and a half hours and a great day trip from Toowoomba. There are plenty of accommodation choices, chalets, lodges and romantic stays near the Bunya Mountains. However, from what I can found, they were mostly two night minimum stay and on the higher scale of price. If you are looking to explore and need something on the cheaper side, then Toowoomba and Dolby are great options. As for the hiking, I managed to complete a couple of walks and was amazed at the lustrous green forest, stunning waterfalls and well-maintained tracks. The area is pristine, so peaceful, and all circles around the small village of Dandabar. You have plenty of parking, cafes, restaurants, picnic areas, and even a horse-drawn carriage rides on weekends. You won't regret adding this to your list of things to do in Toowoomba. Walton stores are basically the Toowoomba version of Eat Street in Brisbane, just on a much smaller scale. Have your choice of something to eat, grab a nice glass of wine or listen to the live entertainment. If you're going on a date night or catching up with a group of friends, then take a look at Walton stores for your next venue. The live music is only on Friday and Saturday nights, but the restaurants are open every day from 7am till late. Check out more info on the Bunya Mountains with watching this video next. Otherwise, Thanks so much for watching today's video and I'll see you in the next one.